Hedge funds and institutions are about to feel the pain and pressure like they have never experienced in their investing lives. And I don't think enough people are talking about this. So I want to bring this to your guys' attention because it also could help make you money. It could help put pressure on these shorts that are involved in shorting AMC. As well as that, I do want to go over the short interest on a couple key stocks that institutional investors hold a majority of their portfolio in that they are not hedging out. So if we see that potential move to the downside, you're going to see hedge funds losing a lot of money and the data is here to support exactly what i am saying on all of these fronts as well as that we are going to be going over some specific data around amc some new movies that are coming out next week what i expect as far as guidance coming on earnings that is on march first and we do have a lot of economic data that is coming out next week that is also going to move the market so we're going to give you guys the full rundown the only thing that i ask is that you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you have not already as well as that if you guys want to support the channel and come learn how to trade with us and make potentially a lot of money from a very small amount of money check out the trading community link down below in the pinned comment down below and also get yourself some free stock with Weeble, Mumu, and Public. That is free money. Sell your sell your free stock and buy some AMC. That's what I personally did. So check those links out if you guys want to be a part of any of those programs. Now, kicking off this video, I want to get into exactly why you clicked on this video to begin with. The hedge funds are about to feel that pain and pressure like they have never felt before. And I don't think a lot of people, especially in the ape community, fully realize the extent of this that they are going to feel starting tomorrow. This says, former top official at Russia's central bank says, now... Just know Russia's federal bank is a central bank is the Fed of Russia. That's the guy that controls the money printer is the bank of the banks says in quotes. There's going to be a catastrophe on the Russian currency market on Monday. And that's very important to know because as your currency starts to get weaker and weaker compared to the dollar, that means your assets that are held in the central bank or just the country itself is getting weaker and weaker. And Russia is a, actually about to experience hyperinflation, uh, probably similar to Zimbabwe. You're talking thousands of percent inflation uh, over months and months. Because why? Nobody wants the ruble. There's nothing to support it at the current moment. And as you see these sanctions kick in, as you start to see, uh, you know, cut off from SWIFT, Nobody's going to want the ruble and that's going to show and that's going to basically make all Russian assets go to zero. Nobody wants to invest in Russia. There's going to be a flood to get out of Russian rubles one, but any asset that is directly tied to Russia, as you guys can see from this chart, the currency has been weakening substantially ever since 2008. And it's weird when you say weakening, it means that essentially for every one dollar in american money you can now get more russian rubles that's weakening so when you see the 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 this number going up that's actually uh weakening right so one dollar now will get you about 83 russian rubles this is probably going to go to 150 this is probably going to double from here because nobody wants their currency they're cut off from swift like North Korea, as well as Iran. And you can get a lot of their currency for a dollar of American money. So uh, that's very important. And I, I don't think a lot of people fully realize the extent of how this is going to affect the markets in general. Because Russia was seen as a bulletproof place to invest in, at least in government bonds in 2019 that's what jp morgan said you could get a four and a half percent yielding bond from the russian government which at that time was probably not a bad idea there wasn't really a looming war or the possibility of them getting cut off swift or have everything sanctioned basically shut down their economy during that time even in the last couple of months that was never really a thought so the bonds were relatively safe they paid much more interest than what americans bond paid at the same time in 2019 american bonds only paid 1.8 percent 
interest. So that's why JP Morgan called them bulletproof. And that's why a lot of big banks and investors invested in Russian bonds. And they still own a lot of Russian bonds. It's estimated to be $46 billion worth of American money invested in those Russian bonds to date. And they're all going to zero. Every single one of them going to zero. So you guys got to think about it. When a bank lends to a hedge fund, and then when a hedge fund takes on these short positions, they have to put up collateral for these short positions. Russian treasury bonds, Russian stocks, it probably, it probably wasn't a bad asset for collateral before all of this happened. Now that they're all going to zero, like UBS sparked massive amounts of margin calls, that is going to happen with individual funds and banks in America as well, especially on Monday. Now that their currency is basically worthless, their country is basically worthless on the global stage, even more than it was before. And I wanted to make that very clear for everybody. If any hedge fund or bank has collateral that involves Russian currency, that involves Russian assets, treasury bonds, whatever it is, does not matter. It's going to zero or virtually zero. It's worthless. And I think that's something that is very important to point out, you know, and a big reason why investors invested in uh, Russian assets is because Russia has one of the lowest debt to GDP ratios. Russia's debt to GDP is only 18%. Comparison to the US debt to GDP is about 140%. The debt to GDP in Japan is about 236%. So Russia is far less indebted as even we are, as Japan is, a lot of other developed nations. And that's what the appeal or where the appeal, I should say, really came from to own Russian debt. And that's a big problem for people that still own that Russian debt. And I do expect a lot of margin calls to start happening on Monday. Because of that, the Russian ruble is probably going to double. It's probably going to lose half of its value tomorrow alone. That's going to be my estimate uh, from all of this information so very important for you guys to realize it's not going to a boom cause the MOS but it's going to put a lot more additional pressure on those hedge funds institutions and banks that have Russian assets which is a lot of them so that's very important to know and tying that together with the news that we are getting now, it says Putin orders Russian nuclear deterrence forces on high alert. Ukraine and Russia delegate to meet. Now, this meeting is probably bullshit. They're meeting at a town just north of the Belarus border. And it could be a setup. You know, it could be legit. But what we've seen is it's probably not going to be legit. And the markets, they're probably not going to rally off of this unless we get some kind of concrete agreement. If we get a concrete agreement that there is a ceasefire, that Ukraine will remain a sovereign country, which doesn't look very likely right now, Russia's getting their ass kicked over there. But nonetheless, Russia has brute force and uh, numbers. So eventually, Ukraine would fall without a uh, ceasefire unless the troops just give up and uh, go home, which uh, probably not going to happen in that regard. So markets, they might actually rally off of this. But when you hear nuclear and on high alert, the markets are never going to react positively, positively to that unless there is something else that offsets that that is more on the bullish side. Hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. So you mix that with this. And then you mix all of that with the fact that hedge funds and institutions are not hedging out their largest positions in their portfolios. There is real cause for concern for the hedge funds and institutions that they are about to feel some major pain. Obviously, that is good for us if uh, you are invested in AMC. You can see that Apple short interest is 0.7%. Microsoft short interest is 0.49%. These two stocks correlate the broad markets. So institutions, like I've went over many times, they are almost forced to own these stocks so they can at least try to match what the S&P does. And then they can branch out from there, invest in other stocks to try to boost their returns higher than the S&P 500. But that is why Microsoft 
and Apple are the largest owned stocks by institutional investors that are in hedge funds portfolios, and they are not hedging them out, which is the exact opposite you should be doing in times of volatility is hedging out your largest positions. Makes sense, right? You want to hedge out your largest positions in your portfolio. And why I am bringing this up is because Apple and Microsoft are underperforming the market. So when I say that, Microsoft was up 0.92% on Friday. Apple was up 1.3% on Friday. If we take a look at how the markets did on Friday, the NASDAQ was up 1.64%. So Microsoft underperformed the NASDAQ by 0.7%. If you want to compare that to the S&P 500, it gets even worse. They underperformed the markets by about 1.6%. Same thing for Apple. They Apple underperformed the markets by about 1% if you're comparing them to the S&P 500 on Friday and underperformed the NASDAQ by about 0.3% on Friday as well. And why is that so important? Well, because these stocks have held up so well through all of this volatility and actually still have a gain on them since October. Hedge funds, they've not lost their ass completely on these stocks. But what is going to happen is that you are going to start seeing a rotation away from these stocks that have done well into a lot of these stocks that are pushed substantially under their fundamental valuations. Like Square, PayPal, AMC, even DraftKings, Lucid possibly. These stocks that are down so much, you can get a much better return on your investment by uh, liquidating out of your winning assets and taking those into a lot of underperforming assets that are under that fundamental valuation. Hopefully that makes some sense, you guys. But long story short, I do think you're going to see Apple and Microsoft continue to move down here in the next couple of months. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on the hedge funds and institutions that by and large are not hedging out their portfolios. So that's what is really key. If you mix all of this together, it looks like a recipe for disaster for the hedge funds. And you are seeing that playing out right now. So growth hedge funds suffer worse root in in, in, in years. January uh, troubles add to 2021 losses for many hedge funds. And it does say that Whale Rocks Capital Management Hedge Fund lost 15.9% for the month in the share class that invests in public and private companies, following a 9% loss last year, according to a person familiar with the firm. Tiger Global Management Hedge Fund, which also lost money last year, lost 14.5% for the month, another person reported. Melvin Capital Management and Light Street Capital management both lost 15 percent following double digit losses in 2021 clients said so it's it's no wonder why citadel is pulling their money out of melvin capital that fund is is going under in due time light street not looking good as well whale rock none of these firms are uh, doing very well and they're still not hedging out their portfolios so uh they're gonna see some major margin calls coming here in the near term future so very exciting in that regard as far as the economic data that is coming out this week you have chicago pmi for february that comes out on a monday at 9 45 a.m you also have wholesale inventories and good trade or goods trade balance at 8 30 as well and then if we do come down to tuesday you see the ISM manufacturing new orders, ISM manufacturing prices, uh, ISM manufacturing PMI, which is highlighted in red, meaning it is a uh, very important for the economy. It's very important for the market. So that's going to be interesting to see how that does play out. You also have ADP employment change for Wednesday, Fed Chair Powell testimony on Wednesday as well at 10 a.m. A lot of other smaller data points, the Fed Beige Book. And that's at 2 p.m. And then on uh, Thursday, you have non-farm payroll, uh, jobless claims, four-week average, continuing jobless claims, market composite PMI, ISM non-manufacturing PMI, uh, Fed Chair Powell testimony yet again, a lot more data than just that. Fed Williams on Thursday at 6 p.m. as well. Total vehicle sales also. And then on Friday, what do we have? Non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, which are going to be very important, manufacturing payrolls, and a lot of other important things right 
there as well. Average weekly hours also going to be another important data point. So when you add all of that together, <laughs> you're definitely going to see a, a lot of catalyst this upcoming week. We know we have AMC earnings on March 1st, which is going to be on Tuesday. As far as that is concerned, I think things will be really good because we do have a lot of movies that are now going to be coming to theaters here in the near term future. So just do movies coming to theaters soon. Really basic with it. Really, really basic with it. See, let's go ahead and click on this one. You have a lot coming to theaters. Uh, a Day to Die, Dear Father, uh, where's the blockbusters? The Batman comes out March 4th. That comes out on Friday. That's going to be a big, big movie. And I think that's going to lead to a lot of good guidance for AMC. And you guys can see just so many movies that are coming out in March and then starting you know, throughout the next couple of months. It's going to be a very good year for AMC. And like I've said many times, AMC is about 30% more efficient now. So if they could even get back to their revenue numbers of about $5.5 billion, again, like they were in 2018, 2019, you're going to see profits at AMC like you have never seen before. That opens up the company for dividends, higher and better growth opportunities and much more so add all of this together i am very very bullish heading into this upcoming week and i wanted to bring you guys all of this information this knowledge this insight on really what to expect this upcoming week how really russian securities assets in general are all going to zero how hedge funds are not protecting their portfolios and the economic data that is also going to be very important i will be watching for futures to see how they react to all of this nuclear talk because typically it's uh, not a good thing when you hear a uh, nuclear and high alert in the same sentence that's probably going to send trading algorithms into a bit of a frenzy so hit the like button subscribe to the channel check out the links down below in the description of this video as well as that if you guys want to join the trading community like i said in the beginning of this video check out the link pinned in the top comment down below thank you guys for watching and i will see you uh, later on tonight on the live stream